Hey there, good evening. Nice to see you. Welcome to the Bronx Buzz. This is BronxNet's program where we talk to reporters, writers, editors, uh, journalists, people who put stuff out in the Bronx. We get to talk to them so you can kind of get a little more about what's really going on. Uh, in our second segment today, we have great news about uh, young people in the Bronx who are doing something spectacular and wonderful right near Yankee Stadium, as a matter of fact, but you'll hear more about that. Right now, let's um, go and uh, say good evening to the Associate State Politics Reporter for City and State New York, uh, Austin Jefferson. Nice to see you, Austin. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Gary. Uh, Austin wanted me to say it in public. I think City and State is the best political paper, the best political publication in New York State. He challenged me to say it out loud, and I did. So there you go. And you're one of the people who helped make it so. Um, we're recording this on Monday. It's going to air for the first time on Thursday. Uh, ex excuse me. We're recording this on Tuesday. It's going to air for the first time on Thursday. Uh, Austin is uh, fresh off the um, State of the State address by Governor Hochul. I was working and didn't get to see it or hear it. What are the highlights? What do we need to know? Um, highlights, right. So I think for starters, she took a pretty strong stance on public safety, which, I mean, makes sense in an election year, obviously. Um, but, but, let yeah, me just jump in on that. So that's politically expedient. Did she have any news about it? Was there going to be funding or she was just casting herself as a public safety advocate? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, 20 million to DA's offices across the state, the, across the state okay. to, um, you know, help prosecute domestic violence cases, um, committing to expanding penalties for uh, retail theft um, and also like, you know, tax breaks for um, uh, small business owners if they get, you know, security systems. Um, that That's actually and, a very big you know, broadly, thing. I, she's definitely talked about this before, but just expanding, you know. Right. What, what I was going to say is the retail theft is obviously a national issue. Um, there have been some questions as to how serious it really is. But I know for local store owners, it's very serious. I mean, <laughs> there it is. Um, and what, well, let, let's talk about housing. What did she say about housing? Because she, you know, she didn't get her bill the last time. And uh, presumably uh, she wants to do something with it this time. I mean, she came out pretty strong just saying, you know, um, we need to build more housing. Uh, she sort of points, you know, other large cities across the country who have, have had similar problems. But, you know, New York, even though we have arguably the best city in the world, um, aren't you behind <laughs> on sort of meeting the need for affordable housing? Right. Um, uh, so, and, yeah, and, she. Uh, she is, is there anything new in there or it's really, do you think she, like, did she alter the plan that didn't make it last time? Uh, or is uh, she saying, look, this is the plan, let's go with it? I mean, is there anything new that we're going to have to know about? Um, I mean, it's anything, it's it's the same sort of concepts, just a much smaller scale, you know, 15,000 houses now, but, you know, not necessarily just overruling local boards to build them, uh, sort of repurposing um, underutilized state property uh, to create, you know, units, um, you know, exploring uh, more tax breaks for building uh, affordable housing. Um, so, I mean, these are all things she's all she's talked about before. She's already talked. She it... yeah, no, go ahead. Finish what you're but saying. Yeah, but, but she's made it clear that this won't necessarily um, be the driving sort of thing she does this year. Really? So so she moved it down um, the priority scale. So uh, what was the driving thing that she's going to be looking at this year that we haven't anticipated? Better relationships with the <laughs> with the two uh, legislative bodies? That would probably help. Sorry um, to be so I, sarcastic. No, I mean, to, to be fair, I think she did make a point to say, you know, we still have good relationships, although we d disagreed pretty dramatically last year. Um <laughs> But I, I honestly, I do think she's really trying to recommit to the idea that, you know, uh, public safety is important to New Yorkers. I mean, I don't think it's fair to say that it was the entire reason that the midterms went so uh, poorly for Democrats. But I mean, I think the narrative of Democrats being soft on crime, you know, didn't help. Didn't help. And so that that well, that that also suggests that that's coming out of the uh, state Democratic Party, that they're saying 
we've got to, you know, we've got to cast ourselves this way. Um, so let's get into the, now we originally called you because we didn't anticipate the state of the state being today, but we originally called you because you uh, wrote um, a very, very interesting and comprehensive uh, story about um, redistricting. Uh, the Court of uh, Appeals orders new round of redistricting before the 2024 elections. <sighs> You know, <laughs> I, I've tried to follow it. What what will what what are we getting this time around? And um, is it only a matter of time before this plan is then challenged <laughs> again? I mean, how, how do you see what you you know what what we're getting now when it comes to redistricting? Um, I mean, I think it's being talked about as if the the process that you know we have, where you know the IRC. They draw up maps, it gets approved by legislature, done. That's what everyone's hoping to get done this time. IRC, Independent Redistricting Commission. I just right. wanted to be um, clear. But, I mean, that being said, uh, if they couldn't sort of come to an agreement last time, that doesn't sort of spell out the most hopeful picture for this time. Um, so, I mean, if the legislature is put in a position where they have to uh, redraw maps themselves, I think there's no way that New York Republicans don't sue again. And, and then, of course, it's, uh, you know, up in the air. Of course, now the um, uh, chief judge is a Democrat appointed and uh, the legislature pushed very hard to make sure that was uh, the chief judge. So so you wonder if that's the way it's going to lean. Um, uh you also wrote a piece which is um, really central uh, in many ways because uh, many people believe that um, the three uh, uh, Democrats that lost in the Bronx were uh, in the Bronx, excuse me, in New York State, were uh, one of the reasons that Republicans control the House of Representatives. Um, you wrote about Jamal Bowman being challenged uh, for a more centrist candidate, uh, the um uh, George Latimer, who is the Westchester County executive, is going to run against him. How do you see this playing out? Uh, Democrats obviously are hoping that the new district lines will help them recapture the House. Well, when you say playing out, are you talking about the race itself or how? You know, Let, let's talk you... in general first, and then we can talk about uh, Latimer versus Bowman. I mean, I, I think if Democrats can, you know, draw lines well, assuming it gets you, to the you, point where boy, that, 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 that was a mouthful. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, if, if the lines can be drawn in a way that Democrats feel is favorable, how's that? Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I think there's a real chance to, you know, pick up some seats, you know, in the Hudson Valley, uh, hypothetically in Long Island, up near Syracuse, maybe that, you know, could see those losses, if not sort of nullified, at least undoing some of the damage. Undoing some of the damage. Um, so now let's just talk about the Latimer um, uh, Bowman thing. Now, this really came about, and, and um, George Latimer has really um, spoken with a loud voice, so to speak, uh, against Bowman's uh, feelings about uh, Israel and uh, the Gaza uh, war. Um, this is a classic, as far as I could see, a classic, you know, I hate using terms like this, but liberal and left progressive versus a much more moderate uh, candidate uh, who uh, is clearly going to come out strong for Israel. Um, if the lines are redrawn, uh, what what's going to happen? I, I mean, mean Latimer said if, it himself. If, yeah. if, it, if the lines go into more of the Bronx than it does now, there's a very low chance he's going to win. I mean, if you look at the map that... And of uh, course, it depends how far into the Bronx. I mean, I'm doing this because this is the southern <laughs> part of the of the district. Yeah, go ahead. Because, I mean, yeah, if you look at the, the legislature's map that sort of snaked from the Bronx all the way up to the Putnam County, I mean, hypothetically, something like that could be a bit more balanced, but at the end of the day, having uh, a constituency that is for a variety of reasons, going to be more aligned with Bowman compared to uh, Latimer, whose name recognition is primarily in Westchester County. 
I mean, that's a case where I don't think there's really a path forward for him. Um, but on the flip side, I mean, and, let me just let me just add one thing. It, it, you know, Bo, um, uh, Congressman Bowman had a large part of the Bronx before the last redistricting, and now he's got only a little sliver in there, and much of it is in Westchester. All right, and what you're saying is, if it's either redone or slightly redone to carve out a larger part of the Bronx, then Bowman obviously will do better. These uh, people who voted him over Elliot Engel, which was a, a very large uh, um, achievement, if you would look at it like that. Right. And I mean, honestly, some members of the community still don't love the fact that Engel, um, well, yeah, was voted out of office. Well, absolutely. For Bowman. You know, uh, anyway, August. yeah, yeah. Uh, also, we're going to look at we, you and, and we should shout out to Rebecca Lewis, who's behind you. The two of you will work on this uh, story about the governor's uh, state of the state. And then we'll certainly look to city and state New York to find out all about uh, <laughs> who's running where and in what districts. And, and we uh, always appreciate um, you and your colleagues joining us on the Bronx Buzz. Thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate you asking me to come. <laughs> Great. Austin Jefferson, Associate State Politics Reporter for City and State New York. We appreciate your time. Thank you. And uh, folks, we're going to take a short break. And as I said, uh, something wonderful is going on in the South Bronx. Uh, so uh, stick around. You'll see it in a moment. Even though we didn't grow up together, he's my favorite brother. Hey, sis. I'm the baby of the family, and he's the gentle giant. What you know about poor George? Man, please, that's a classic. You know when they say people Boy, are a rare breed? Get off my yeah, he's that. I'm sorry, I'll be back in a few hours. Don't worry, Shaq, you know I'm for you. I know. Go get the football. Yeah. That was my favorite memory. He was always for you. This is a true story of me, Bridget Floyd, and this guy, George Perry Floyd Jr., my big brother. today. Can you see anything different as a pill? No. No. You don't know? Fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. There's only one thing that will save somebody's life. That is naloxone nasal spray. Fentanyl is cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. Why would drug dealers put a lethal dose of fentanyl in drugs if they know it's so harmful? It's really just all about the money. I just didn't realize that one pill could change your whole life. More kitchen now. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. All right, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. I'm so thrilled because one of my buddies, one of my Bronx buddies is here, someone I know who has done just unbelievable work, and he's brought one of his uh, great young people with him, and they have something exciting to share, and we're going to help them share it. Uh, the uh, founder and executive director of South Bronx United is uh, Andrew So. Nice to see you again, Andrew. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Uh, it, it's This is very exciting, and people are going to go, what, what? Uh, and uh, along with uh, uh, Andrew is, um, let's see, Kaylee Flores. She's a workforce development fellow, a um, college student at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, and also, and here's a hint, a clubhouse cafe barista. So uh, nice to see you, Kaylee. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. 
Great. Andrew, um, South Bronx United, which I understood from the beginning, uh, you mentioned it's about 15 years, uh, is a soccer program, right? Yeah, so- yeah. I mean, that, that's what you think of me, and that's what how Some I started the organization. Like it, was, it was through soccer, but it's really about utilizing the power of the sport of soccer um, to, to enrich the lives of young people uh, and, and families here in the Bronx. So um, we combine soccer – We've, 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 for years, we've combined soccer with academic enrichment, college prep, mentoring, immigration legal services, social work supports. Um, so it's always been about how we can enrich the lives of, of you, using soccer, but, but providing a range of other companies. Where did, before we, and, and we're going to talk about this very exciting venture, um, where did you get the idea? I mean, obviously, athletics, and, and we all know the value of athletics. Where did you come, like, at what point did you say, you know, I like to coach soccer, but, you know, in, in the Bronx especially, it's a lot larger than that, and we can do more with it. How did that come to you? Yeah, it came, came up uh, through, t- through teaching initially. I was, I was a teacher in, in a school in the Morrisane area, um, and I loved soccer growing up um, as well, and I, I was, was a coach. Uh, but but the um, students in the school had nothing to do during after-school time. They were looking for something to keep them engaged. We had some kids that um, never kicked a soccer ball b- before. Um, but we started an after-school soccer program at the school, and they loved the social aspect of it. They loved to learn about the game. And then and then I had I had a handful of kids that uh, soccer was already part of their, their blood. We had, we had kids uh, kid from Mexico, kids from Ivory Coast, from Nigeria, from Jamaica. They all already loved the sport. So combining that, uh, kids that were looking for a place to play and they couldn't find anywhere – with um, students that just needed something to keep them busy, keep them engaged. So, the so it, what, it was the it was the the students, the the players, the young people themselves, who you realized, wait a minute, we've now engaged them in this. Let's find other things for them to do. Let's let's get a good avenue because as a teacher, you understood that there were other needs that needed to be served. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there was no after school program at the school. So we started as a soccer program and that led to the idea to start a whole organization, South Bronx United. So, um, you know, I'm tempted to bring Kaylee into the discussion, but not just yet, because I want to lay out what we're doing. Uh, First of all, I was not aware that you had a full clubhouse. Now, you've had this clubhouse on River Avenue, um, many people know that as, you know, kind of the home of Yankee Stadium. You've heard of that place. And um, so you've been there for a while. I, w- I was not aware of that. Yeah, about a year and a half. So we opened our clubhouse and our offices here last September, uh, September of 2022. Okay. And and now h- here it is. The drum roll. That's my drum roll. And what did we open on Monday of this week, which blows my mind of how great it is yeah just just monday we've been super excited uh to, to open the clubhouse cafe um so it's a social enterprise neighborhood coffee shop run by young people um maybe i'm giving away here but young people like kaylee um who, who um get behind the bar serve the community but also are learning and uh, uh le- le- building job skills uh, uh through through weekly job skill workshops and, and training as baristas and, and being here to serve the community. Wow. What, what, what a wonderful experience. Okay. Now Kaylee, nice to meet you and um, tell us. So first of all, tell us you, did you play soccer before you met Andrew and were part of South Bronx United? Um, yes. I started playing soccer in fifth grade, but I didn't find out about South Bronx United until I joined high school. Mm-hmm. Um, where where did you go to high school? school? Where'd you go? I went to high school for law, advocacy and community justice. Okay. Um, and, and I had so then, then did you you played soccer in high school or you uh, kind of gravitated towards South Bronx United? I was guided by South Bronx United. <laughs> That's good. I like that yes. idea. And um, and now um, you we you I say we you've opened a, we've opened a cafe, and um, tell me. When, when you heard about that, was it of interest? Was it exciting? Tell me something about that. It was exciting. I was on tutoring. Um, I was doing, it was during college prep. 
um, they came in, the staff, and they were telling us about the cafe, um, how as we were um, hiring um, adults my age to work for coaching or cafe. Um, and it was something I wanted to try out since I worked in a cafe before. I wanted to have more experience on it. And I guess I gave it a try. <laughs> and, and here you are. Um, the the um, notion of and, and it, it's a job, right? I mean, that that's how it works out, right? I yes. Mean, it, and, and, and so it's a job. It's a skill. It's certainly a job and a skill as you move through. I mean, you, you may not do that all your whole life. You're a college student with objectives, but this is a real good thing for you and and other other young people, isn't it? Yes. What? Tell me why. It teaches us at a young age how to work, and it's better for us as young kids to have experience because after college or after our education, we're eventually going to have to get a job. And some of us don't really have much experience or, or much skills or something on your oh, resume. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, what, what I'm just, uh, listen, I, I, where I got the address is 812 River Avenue down the block from that little place called Yankee Stadium. I realize it's January now. Do you realize that there will be 45,000 people around that cafe 81 times a year i mean do you realize how popular the place is going to be and how excited i mean i'm excited um, you must be thrilled right i mean there's everybody's going to be coming in there yes i'm very excited i would like for everyone to know about the clubhouse cafe it's a very beautiful place to be inside mm -hmm. and and you're in the cafe now so that mural that we're looking yes. at is <laughs> among the uh, visuals um what's it been like um uh, i mean it's only what a day and a half um but but what do you, do you like doing the work yes i like the co-workers as well everybody's very friendly here mm -hmm. and nice uh, are, are these receiving... people you played soccer with yes oh so of course they're friendly and nice <laughs> You're passing yes. the ball. They love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, we also had um, amazing customers come in. Um, they'll tell us amazing things about, like, bringing light to the community for opening a cafe. Yep. And, and, but again, people from all over are going to know about it. I, I just think it's um, <laughs> uh, wonderful. Now, um, Andrew, uh, you don't get the coffee out of nowhere. You, you've been working with some existing structures to put this together, uh, which frankly, from my perspective, is ingenious. Just tell us who gets credit for like supporting and working with you. And uh, let's see, I saw several treats of cookies, croissants and muffins. Um, and, yeah. and you did that through a local group didn't you yeah yeah there's uh, been been a, a support from a number of different areas we definitely couldn't um, do this alone I, I did not come in with with a background but we have a, a board member that owns um, several cafes in the city um, who's brought that experience and then devotion coffee we have to give a huge um shout out they've been the key partner in this um they've donated equipment to get us started um, they've provided a great deal on the coffee and they provide training for the um, fellows uh, to, to learn to be priestess. You, you didn't mention my buddies over there at Motley Kitchen. It's, uh, yes. So and, and uh, we want to shout out Saad head. and then Motley Kitchen is amazing. If you come by, uh, get the pastries from Motley Kitchen. Um, we have some desserts from Sully and Vanilla. That's another bakery town based in the uh, Port Morris area. And then the teas. Um, uh, uh, is, is supported by Harney and Sons Fine Teas um, mm -hmm. that have donated a bunch and are supporting um, the Kaylee, um, I guess in addition to learning how to you know, make the coffee, I'm actually drinking coffee here. It was made by my Keurig machine. I didn't get down there. I will get down there. I can guarantee you that. But um, do, but you learn, like you heard what Andrew was just talking about, about you know running a business. You learn also about running a business. I mean, you know, yes. you've got to want to make a living you got to get the pro the product in and all that kind of stuff right i mean that's been part of the education yes um are you still playing soccer yes i am i am still playing for the girls u19 i am their goalkeeper oh you are yes all right and how and and how and do you play now in the winter at all um right now no it's pouring, raining We've... today so i don't know yeah <laughs> For now, no. We're still on break until March. We enter our spring season. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Andrew, um, do you, you still run the soccer program? I mean, that that's really the foundation of all Yeah, that's the key that brings about, we have in our organization about 1,600 young people every year. 1,600. 1,600 in all yeah, our it's participating. Not, it's not a some, little organization. In some, uh, some soccer program, and uh, we're open to kids and kids. Um, as young as actually age two, take uh, play, playing in soccer classes here at the clubhouse. And then our recreational program started age four and five um, right right here at McCombs um, Dam Park, Reverend T. Foster Park, and Patterson Park over uh, uh, by Patterson wow. Houses. And do, do, you, do you have, I mean, this, it, to me, getting this open, and, you know, getting the space, getting the clubhouse, having the product. Uh, and now I'm going to ask a terrible question. What's next? <laughs> or, or are we just going to swallow this figuratively and literally and then see what happens next? Or, or yeah, well, you, I mean, we, we are always looking to figure out ways to grow our, our impact and serve the community. And and this was was the way the, the Clubhouse Cafe. So I think for the next uh, year or two, we're, we're looking to, to make sure this is a big success with help uh, from, from yourself, Gary, and all the folks watching. Um, but make sure that this is a big success and think about how we can continue to support uh, all the youth of the South Bronx. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to make the sale for you now, ladies and gentlemen, people of the Bronx, get over there. You know where Yankee Stadium is. You know where it's not like it's a little tucked away. It's on River Avenue, 812 River Avenue before I, I so you're going to be open i guess before yankee games after yankee games or? yeah we plan to extend our hours before wow. yankee games so so uh everyone's welcome to stop by then yeah have have a cup of coffee and uh, listen i'm saying this you guys don't have to say it make sure that you give your um baristas a, a nice tip because they're working hard these are young people from the bronx All right kaylee that was a good thing right <laughs> I'm, I'm working yes. for you. Okay. But listen, I, I couldn't have more, Andrew, you know that. I couldn't have more respect for you and, and what you do. And for our young people, I, we had um, uh, uh, another group and I said to them what I'm going to tell Kaylee now. You get in front I'll, and lead, I'll get right behind you. That's, that's the way we look at it. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much for uh, everything you do. Congratulations on the new place. Uh, Kaylee, I do like mine with skim milk uh, and um, uh, and and no sugar or anything like that. Just so you'll and maybe a latte or something like that. We'll we'll figure that out when I get. There. I'll have one of each. Right. Okay, Kaylee, thank you for just being a, a, a wonderful. We appreciate everything you do, Andrew. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. The Clubhouse Cafe, brand new Bronx kids. We love them. Gotta have them. Eight Twelve River Avenue. Stop by. Spend spend generously, tip generously, and enjoy the, the treats and the coffee. Thanks so much. See you guys. Thank, thank you. you. All right. That will do it for another edition of uh, the Bronx Buzz. We thank Austin from City and State New York uh, for talking politics with us. And, uh, you know, if the curtain don't fall and the creek don't rise, yep, we'll be back next week. Good night. <laughs>